In this video, we're going to be talking about alert. Sometimes you want to alert the user, you know, bring their eyes to a certain part of the page because let's face it, if you have everything, you know, the same, you know, text font size, it's going to get very easy to lose important information. So we're going to be looking at the docs and then it looks like I have a few examples for you all. So strap on in and let's get into reading time. So we can see right here, alert, it says they are used to communicate a state that affects a system, feature, or page. So a state, you know, that could be kind of ambiguous, basically saying something happened, good, bad, just plain straight up informational. Typically, you know, um, you, you, you want people to know if something uh, good has happened, especially if they're uploading, you know, important information, but you also want to let them know, yo, something really bad happened because say they're, uploading a check to like their bank, right? You want them to know when something happened, when there was an uh-oh. Otherwise, you know, they could go spend money. They could go to a hotel. They could go on vacation thinking that money is there and then they're screwed. And then guess, guess who tells all their friends not to use your service. So alerting is very important. So let's get down to the parts of it that you're going to be importing. So we have four alert related components. We have the alert itself, the icon, the title, and the description. These are all pretty self-explanatory, but let's see them in motion here. So we see this usage and this first one is an error. We could tell it's an error just by looking at the color here, but if you can't see this color, we have status error right here. So if you are colorblind, have some kind of, you know, you don't see, you know, this pinkish red color like I do, you can still program these in by using status error here. So that's cool. We have an icon, which is this to the left right here, this exclamation point. We have the title, which is this bolded text right here that says the browser or your browser is outdated. And then in the same line here, we see your shocker experience may be degraded. And then we have a close button that they just kind of slapped in here at the end. Now I do recommend having if you don't time this because you can make this appear and then just like fade it out right although when it comes to errors i would rather in, in most cases give the user the ability to x out of this because you don't want to time an error and they're a slow reader or slow to kind of understand how you're wording something and then it fades out and they're like wait what, what the hell went wrong right so I would give them like an X button here, but if it's something like a success, we come down here, then maybe, you know, you, you just flash it and say, and say, you know, operation was successful. So that's pretty cool there. So we could change the status of the alerts by passing the status prop, which we've already talked about. The, this affects the color scheme and icon used. So as we can see, we had the exclamation point. Let me move this up a little bit here when it's you know an, an error, but when it's success, we have the check. And that looks like we have uh, exclamation point again when it's yellow, but you know, you could say something like services are slow, you know, you gotta change your password. So it's kind of like a soft error, but it's saying, hey, this is something you need to take seriously. And then we have info here at the bottom. And info is just blue, letting you know, hey, this is what's going down. Maybe when you have someone sign into a website, maybe for, I know my apartment complex, has events right maybe when you sign in to pay rent they have something hanging out up there that's like we're having a uh, a food truck and hippies selling beads from two to six o'clock today come check us out because they do stuff like that you would want something like this to appear because you can just grab people's attention when they're in the portal now of course what would be a component without variants it says alert has four variant styles you could use Pass the variant prop and use either subtle, solid, left accent, or top accent here. And we can see the differences. We have the success all the way through, which I do like that. And we have subtle, which is just, I think, the way we've kind of always seen it here. We have solid, so everything is like this thick, green, dark color, and the icon is kind of inverted a bit, so you know the white background stands out a bit more. We have the left accent, which actually I kind of like that left accent. I don't know what I would choose between left accent and then maybe the subtle one, but I guess it all depends what other colors are going on with the page. 
And then we have the top accent here. Now, why they don't have like a right or bottom accent, I don't know. I would have added that in myself just because you never know if you're adding on the left, why not the right, why not the bottom? But if you need that feature, I guess just, um, you know, go to their, their board and uh, make a request or something. So it looks like we have some composition going on here. It says alert ships with smaller components to allow for flexibility in creating all kinds of layouts. Here's an example of a custom alert style and layout. So you can see this is drastically different than before, right? We have the alert, the code down here, we have success, it's subtle, but we're also adding all these other styles in here, which you could do with any component. But we have the you know alert icon, uh, the, the subtle, all this stuff is being you know sized and molded with the styles. And this is nothing that is weird, wild out of the box at all. This is all stuff you know. You could look up in the styles part of the docs or go back to my video on styles. Th these are all things that you know you could just kind of slap in here and, and, and manipulate these. And this is not a lot of code. If you look at this right here, to go from this to this looks drastically different, but the amount of code you really have to write is not, not that bad. And so I kind of like that. It says alert can also incorporate other chakra components. Here's an example of alert with wrapping description text. So we have alert with an alert description right here. So we have the alert, it's a success, obviously it's green. We have the icon, which is this check mark. Then we have a box that we're jamming in there. So we have this alert title, which is success. It puts it up here. And then we have the alert description. We're displaying it in a block. All that text is moving down here. And then we have the close button here at the right, which is rather than it sitting right here, it's sitting more kind of at the top, more in line or on the same line as it is here in success. And even as compared to the previous example or just the out of the box alert example that are given you to start off this documentation, this is not a lot of code you have to do. And I think that's pretty cool. And you don't have to be like a CSS master to do this stuff, you know, the classes, IDs, all this. It's um, it's pretty amazing how visually powerful you can make your components with not a lot of effort. And so we have all the props down here. Good to go. Thumbs up. But you know what? I like to code, so let's get to coding. Alrighty, for our first example of alert, what we're going to do is just make a basic one, and we're going to cover it in a VStack here just so it's easier to look at. And let's just get to coding. So here we have this alert and you can make these pop up maybe at the bottom of a page, wherever it may be, maybe at the top as well. It, it depends uh, if it's like a form or maybe something went wrong and you just want to alert and, and get a bunch of information out there right away. So we have this alert icon right here, which is this I, and the title is stop looking, stop looking at dirty photos. And the alert description right here says your mom has been notified what you're looking or what you're seeing, freak. <laughs> I don't know. Some of these examples, I get bored of writing the same thing every time. So I, in a lot of sense, make these for me too. And then I have this button here. You could center it a bit more. You can move it down. And here you could wrap it in other, you know, layout components to make it a bit more flush here. But if we wanted to, it doesn't have to be blue. We could do other stuff here. So we could actually change the status to error, which makes it red. Info, which makes it blue, which seems to be the default. Success, which is green. And warning, which is this yellow-ish orange color here. So in the next section, what we're gonna do is take everything we have here, keep it relatively the same, 
and we're going to add a variant to it to show you how you could stylize this a bit more. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and add that variant in here. We have left accent, left accent, solid, subtle, and top accent. So let's check out what left accent is. So we have this left accent here, and this is pretty much, I think, taking the color here, although this looks a little bit more like of a hardened color. And we're just giving a little bit of pop here on the side. We have solid, which it's like, even though this is a warning, this is almost like, you know, some like a, some, there's a meltdown occurring at the reactor, right? This is pretty intense and in your face. We have subtle, which seems to be the default, which <laughs> makes sense for me. And then top accent, which eh, that's okay. I think I like the left accent a little bit more, but these are variants. And so what I'm going to do in the next section is I'm going to show you how to hook up a state to this. And we're going to play around with some stuff, add something that does like an on click. And I'll see you all in the next video. Alrighty, so hopefully you didn't go to the next video. I record so many of these, I sometimes go into this robotic droning say the same thing over and over again. So this is our last example, and let's add some state to this and just have some fun. So we have this right here. Let's space this out. You can see my imports up here. Feel free to pause and add them in as you want. So I'm gonna scroll. I'm gonna break this up here. So we have our alert that we had last time. So our two meaningful sections really are this button and then this whole entire alert here. And I have state up here, which is set to none. And since our components could take in whatever CSS values we want, this is set to none, which is why you don't see that alert. But when I click this button here, um, this is going to switch this, and I can't just, you know, click and click and click. This is probably just, you know, just a one-time click here. I'm going to set display to this just empty string here, and we'll see what it does. And so we get this pop-up here, and it says, stop looking at dirty photos. Your mom has been notified about what you're seeing, freak. Maybe this is my dog, Bernie. You know. He likes corgis. Maybe he's a late night wanting to look at some corgis and he got caught in the act. He got caught in 4K. So yeah, this is just a silly example you could use with buttons, actions, and then displaying alerts after action has been executed. So if you like what I'm doing, like, share, subscribe, and uh, I'll see you all in the next video.